Hello, Stitches of the World. I'm Stitch Tupar, and welcome to my third ever Lost Talk video. And this one will be about my stitching journey. I wanted to share with you how I got into cross stitching and show off um, all the things I've been working on in the past. And that's it, actually. And so, beside me, I have a big box with all the things I finished in the past and I'm going to show them off to you. I tried actually recording uh, on my phone this time because I noticed that um, the quality of the video that uh, I used for the previous ones wasn't very well uh, so I thought I should give it a go with the phone but um, um, like many of you my phone died after about 15 minutes of recording and I didn't want to spend a lot of time thinking with trying to add a piece of the film together so I'm trying to record this on a different laptop and see if that is any helpful. Um, if not, I'll try, there's a big blank space here, so I'll try and insert pictures of uh, my uh, finished uh, projects uh, here somewhere. If they don't show up, then I didn't manage it and they might be at the end of this video. So let's get started. Um, I have quite a bit to show you. There will be some crinkling because there are lots of plastic wrappings. Um, but I suggest you pick up your stitching and listen while stitching, I guess. Um, so, um, my stitching journey began about six years ago. Um, I do remember when I was little that I did try some cross stitching at school. And the only memory I have of that is actually uh, stitching uh, my fabric onto my dress as I was working in hand, trying to get uh, the thread through the fabric. Apparently, I also stitched through my dress, and my teacher had to help me pick it out so that it would actually detach from my dress again. That's the only memory I really have of being very crafty. Um, I did. I, I was crafty when I was little. I did some playing and things like that, and uh, I uh, used to enjoy uh, some bit of woodwork with my dad. Um, but other than that, I didn't really do much crafty stuff, especially not after my teenage years. But uh, about six years ago, I got a tip from a friend um, about um, maybe checking out meditation. And I did a course on that, which also included some information about Zen philosophy. And uh, that was very interesting, I still meditate. Um, and one of the things that they mentioned in uh, the course was that focus is very important for meditating. Um, and that's actually one of the things I struggle with. Um, I tend to get distracted too easily and move on to something new. I always like things that are new. Um, and they uh, mentioned that uh, cross stitching, for example, could actually help in uh, training your focus and your concentration. So I thought I would give that a go. And since uh, one of my niece's birthdays was coming up, I thought, well, maybe I could make something for my niece and see if I like stitching and move on from there. If I don't like it, then I still have a nice present for my niece. And if I do like it, then I can do other stuff. And I may have mentioned this before, but uh, I also may have mentioned that my memory is terrible, so I'm not sure. Um, but uh, that, uh, at that time, I didn't really know much about what was available on the market regarding the stitching. So I knew that there were kits, that's all I knew. I knew that there were hoops, that's all I knew. Um, and I, did, I looked uh, everywhere for a local needle workshop and I did find uh, one in my uh, in near, near town, but uh, it didn't really have a lot to offer and I did have some kits, but they were not really my style. So I went looking online and I found a Dutch uh, online shop and they had uh, a, a pattern that I thought that would that be fun to make for my niece. So that's the actual first thing I ever made. And that is this. I don't know the English word for it, so 
I can only give you a literal translation. I might be on the package actually. No, it's in Dutch. Um, we call this a growth meter. So it's it shows uh, the height. So it starts at 70 centimeter up to 130 centimeter, and we uh, make them for children to measure their growth rate. And this one is uh, a kit by uh, a, a Belgian company called Babaco. And I have several of their kits. And it came with the cloth uh, in Ada and uh, the glosses and the needle. And I just started this uh, stitching in hand. I learned about that you have to come to the middle, so that's what I did. I made several arrows in this and I actually did frog most of them out, I think. But it was uh, a lot of fun to make this. What I'll do is I'll uh, give all the details about the different kits and designers uh, in the down below, in the description box. Uh, if you need to know anything more that I forgot to mention, please leave a comment and I can look it up for you. Um, uh, I did finish this uh, for my niece and I finished it in the hanger style. Uh, I put some fabric on the back to hide the stitching. Um, and I gave it to my niece, um, but um, it's in her bedroom, so I don't have it with me. I'll try and look up if I have some pictures of it, and then they will be somewhere here or at the end of the video. Um, and when I was finishing this, I, uh, I still had some time before her birthday was up, and um, I have two nieces. I knew that if I was going to make, have something stitched for one, then the other one would want something too, because that's how it works with two little girls. They always want the same thing that the other one has. And so I looked around, moved some stuff, and I found a sort of a work announcement pattern that I really liked, and I thought I would make that for my other niece. And that's this pattern. Um, it's a Lenart uh, kit. It also came with a fabric, which I think was Aiden. Uh, we'll have to check it out. I'm not sure. I think it was Aiden. Maybe it's on the back. Oh, it's, uh, it's cotton, so it's probably an even weave. Um, what I liked about this is that it had the pink and the blue colors in it, so if I ever had to do another piece for a baby, I could choose the same pattern. Um, and that was uh, a pretty quick stitch. I really enjoyed uh, doing the cross stitch, so I decided that, well, this was going to be a new hobby for me, and I will continue on. And this uh, I actually finished uh, in a frame, which is hanging in my niece's bedroom, and I think I have some pictures, so probably up here. If not, then maybe at the end of the video. Um, there's not much else I can say about this. It's on a large design. Oh, it's on Ada. It's right here. The girl. Um, it came with threads and a needle and a pattern. <coughs> oh, actually, as you can see, this is um, a gloss I, left, I have left over from it. What I've noticed with these kits is that uh, I always have a lot of gloss left over. I don't know if I'm a very frugal stitcher or if, if that's just something that these companies do. I did uh, read somewhere, I think it was Babaco, who had a standard 20% more gloss than they expect you to need. Um, and I did do some frogging and I have always, uh, I've never run out of any, co any thread color. So, that's just something that's good to know. But most of these companies always say that if you're running out of gloss, you can always contact them and they will send you some extra. So after doing those, I thought, well, this is my new hobby and let's try and make something for myself. And um, I also noticed that I liked making things that had a purpose, so I'm not necessarily a post stitcher. I do like to finish things. Um, 
And so I thought, well, I'll make something to put in my own home. And let's not try and be too complicated. I'll try and find something that I can turn into a pillow. And well, you'll already see the finished product behind me. But I found this kit. It's by Verbeco again. Uh, it only is the pattern and the fabric for the stitching of the front of the pillow. There's no backing material provided. There's also no pillow provided, so you have to, have to order them separately. Um, I'll add the details of the design in the down below. And this was pretty easy to stitch. It came uh, uh, with the necessary woolen threads and a big needle and it, all these type of kits they have a mesh fabric and onto the mesh is printed the design in the, in the same colors as shown so it's pretty easy to follow which part and which type of thread to stitch on which part and I stitched it up really fast and then I put it away for a bit because then I would have to sew some sort of back onto it and I don't even have a sewing machine, um, so I thought, well, let's just put that aside. And I also ordered an, another kit I could work on. So that's this is the finished item, which I only fully finished maybe two years ago. I ordered backing material, that's a zip, and it is just a square fabric for the kit, and you sew it on to the uh, to the embroidered piece. And I ordered a separate pillow and I just stuck that inside. But this is the finish. I'm really happy with it. I chose the red colors because, um, as you can see behind me in my videos, I have a red couch. I thought that would be the most easy thing to uh, match with my interior design. And well, that was my first ever finish for myself. And as I just mentioned, I, also, I already had a different kit uh, ready to go, um, which is this one. And this is actually not a cross-stitch pattern, it's a pattern by Anchor, and as you can see it's a freestyle embroidery. Um, this comes in a kit with uh, some cotton fabric with uh, an outline of the design printed on it, so that you can know where to stitch which parts. I'll show you a little bit uh, from a, a far away what the chart actually looks like. So the chart is just a full design and in each part there is a number or a letter or a symbol and that refers to a single chart like this which I can show up close a bit. And this will actually state um, what type of stitch it is. So we have a set and stitch, long and short stem stitch, back stitch, straight stitch, and French knots. And they all have their own symbol, which corresponds as well to a certain um, plus uh, color. And they, they come with an instruction on how to do these types of stitches. This is their standard uh, instruction uh, pattern, so it has more uh, instructions for different types of stitching than it actually required in the in this piece, but then they can stick it in anything and it always has the right instructions. I did have uh, some issue with these instructions, they are not very uh, detailed, so I did end up looking for a book which would show me better uh, stitch diagrams for each of these stitches, and I did find one and it's in Dutch. I might do a separate video on that book and some of the uh, Rico designs I have as a sort of flip um, through. This one, it took me quite a while to work on. I did, I had to purchase a loop actually for it because uh, before that all I did was stitch in hand, but this requires to have enough tension. Um, and I, I bought a hoop and I did the whole piece with that hoop. It's about this big. Um, and when I was doing this, I actually lost my stitchy block for quite a while. Um, with some private things going on as well as my 
job at that time was really, really busy. Um, I was just too tired in the evenings to stitch. Um, that actually, I found out that was a secondary benefit of starting to stitch. Besides, it helped me with my focus and my concentration. Um, it also um, made me stop just sitting around and watching television uh, every evening, which I didn't really enjoy. Um, and now I just sit in the evenings and actually since I discovered floss tube, I watch floss tube in the evening while I stitch. Um, but I don't watch television anymore, which I actually kind of like. Oh yeah, and this was actually a kit with all anchor threads. So this, this one. Um, and my first experience with a metallic thread. This is actually anchor metallic, but I don't think it's very different from the DMC metallic. And this was such a pain to work with. Um, it frays like crazy, so even trying to thread it through the needle was excruciating. Um, I, at that time, as I said, I had never heard of something like thread heaven or using shorter lengths or uh, knotting it through your needle or and using fray stop, so I just use it as a cane and I, let's just say it's not something I would ever repeat voluntarily. And so, um, after having a bit of a stitchy bug failure for a while, I picked it up again, I think, I don't know, two years ago, I know, probably. And it's finished, and you can see a tiny bit beside me. Let's see if I can get it off the wall. And I'm sorry that you have to stare at my butt for a bit there, but this is it. Um, I had this frame uh, professionally. That's the only thing I've ever had framed professionally because it's, yeah. I just thought it was so good, it deserved professional care. Um, I think I can try and show you a bit of the close-up. I will try and make some close-up pictures and insert them somewhere. Um, but because it's very nice to see the effect of a different kind of stitching. So here the bird is mainly satin stitch and a lot of the flowers are long and short uh, stitches and have some French knots. And these flowers have a mix of uh, the long stitch of the certain stitch and the long and short ones. I like the effect that they give the um, difference in, in the texture of this. But yeah, that's um, my one and only embroidery piece. Or well, I have one actually as a whip, which I haven't shown you, I think. I might not show you in the future, but that's my sort of on the go project. Which I, mm, I don't usually have something on the go, so I don't work on it a lot. Um, yeah. And then I finished that, and I was waiting for an order to come in, and I was noticing that I am a bit of a process stitcher in the sense that I was itching to stitch, and I had nothing to stitch. And then, luckily, my sister came for a visit. She gave me this. And I said, What's that? As you probably are saying at the moment. Well, this is something she found when she was clearing her attic. And, and she actually stitched something when she was in university, which is a long time ago. Um, and she actually finished it. And this is from a magazine. Um, I'm not even sure which one, but it's a Dutch magazine, so probably nothing you could ever find somewhere. Um, and when I saw this picture, I thought, oh yeah, yeah, you did finish this. I remember seeing this in your house. <coughs> and uh, she had all the materials left over from that project, and she decided, well, I might as well give it to my sister since I... She never stitched anything again after that. And 
After working on this project, I kind of understand why. This is actually the pattern, and as you can see, she actually uh, marked off some of the parts that she's worked on, which made it kind of difficult to read the symbols, so that was a bit of a pain. But I did work on this, and why it was such a pain is the fabric that she had for this. Um, we call it cheesecloth, I think it's the same name in English, and it's a uh, very coarse linen with a lot of big uh, blobs of thick threads in it. I'm trying to find one. I think I picked out a bit of the fabric where they want to the least of those, but yeah, like this. I don't know if you can see that. No, yeah, like that one there. Oh god. Um, but I did finish it. And that kept me from losing my mind while I was waiting for my order of different uh, other patterns. And this is my finished piece. I do like it. Um, I put it away uh, after I finished this because I wasn't really sure I would ever put it somewhere in my house. And it just was a um, sort of, it's not, you know, it's not something I picked out for myself to do. But now that I've had it out, I actually do like it a lot, and I think I will find a frame for it and put it up somewhere. But I will never again um, stitch anything on cheesecloth. If I have to, I will, but not voluntarily. And that's actually why um, I never stitch on linen. And maybe I'm biased because this is such a terrible fabric. I might I might have to try some women out, but a fabric of preference is even weak. <coughs> um, and then finally my uh, my order came in with uh, several kits and I started working on that. I think I worked on these last year. So the first one is a Christmas table runner. It's also a Verbaco kit uh, with some deer and some, for some reason, some red uh, Christmas trees. But I do, I do like the pattern, um, and it came with um, with the material already sewn up as a tablecloth. So you don't, there's nothing you needed to do for that. It's just only the cross stitching you had to do, and as that last summer I think and that was really a lot of fun to stitch um, again I have a lot of losses left I need to bobbinate those and put them in my stash as a sort of backup one thing about these kits is uh, especially with the Vavaco kits um, they come with a color chart but they don't show the DMC and the thread numbers they have uh, DMC threads that they are in the kit, but for some reason uh, the company doesn't want to tell you which DMC uh, colors they are. Which used to be a problem for me, but not anymore since recently I got one of those DMC uh, thread cards with all the threads and the numbers. So I might actually, next time I feel like procrastinating, I will take these out and bobbinate them and try and figure out the DMC numbers, so that in the future I can use them in a different project. <coughs> this is my finish. Well, this is the whole piece. I'll show you a bit up close. So this is the center part. And the lighting on here is terrible, so it even washes out the white even more than in real life. But I had a bit of a goldfishy moment with this. She's a YouTuber, by the way, who had some issues with white on the fabric that she picked. It's not showing up very well, not as much as I would like. Um, so that's a bit of pity because I do like this snowflake design in the center. This is the, the two deers and the Christmas trees. Little star. I really like sewing this. The, uh, stitching the star in particular, I like that it had this design in it. And the deer were a lot of fun too. And then other side is exactly the same. So next Christmas I'll have something to put on my table. 
Um, then I, I had this pillow on my couch and was looking kind of lonely, so I thought, well, let's see if I can find another design I like to add another pillow to my couch. And I did as you can already see. But it's not a Vivaco kit, uh, it's a Vivaco kit. I think that might it actually be a Dutch company. I'm not sure. Um, and I did like to have a little bit of red in it, but I wanted a bit of contrast too. So this has you know, grey and black and white in it. Again, a bit of a Scandinavian theme. I really like it. And it came in, a, uh, in the same way, so with a pre-printed mesh fabric and wool. And they are really easy and really quick to stitch up. Not so much to finish, but when I finished stitching this one, I still hadn't finished, fully finished that one. So I decided, well, if I have two pillowcases, I need to actually finish them. So I ordered these backing materials and the, the stuff, stuff in the pillow, um, and I got my mom to lend her and uh, to lend me her sewing machine, and I sewed them on. And it actually was pretty easy to do. The, the backing fabric is just a square fabric, uh, which is about 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters wider than what you need for the pillow. So there's a lot of room for error, which is great for me. And the only thing I had to remember, which I forgot the first time I tried, is that you have to put it inside out when you sew it. So the first try I noticed pretty quickly, I'm, I'm glad to say, that I had to put it the wrong way. So I had to unfix that and do it again. But once you've done it, it looks, yeah, and I, I like it. I think it looks fun. The only thing I did notice after sewing them together, and I'm not sure if I'll pick it up, in, oh yeah, you can see that the white in this pillow, so the one I'm wiggling my finger at, is a bit more of a cream to yellowish white, and this white on this one is like DMC white, like pure white. So that doesn't make them a bit mismatched, but well, I don't care too much about that. <coughs> And part of that order also was, uh, was another kit by the Nart on this uh, bird in a bird feeder. It's a design by Marilyn Bostin, who is a Dutch painter. She paints a lot of watercolor, garden scenes. She's pretty well known, I think. She's also well known outside of the Netherlands. And this, I like this because I do uh, enjoy birds and I like stitching birds, but uh, a lot of patterns have birds that are not necessarily um, birds that you can also find in the Netherlands. And this one is, this, all these birds are types of birds that I can see in my own garden. So that's why I liked it. And it comes with, if you notice, there's a bit of a blue-greenish background and pattern that's actually uh, printed on the fabric and I knew that when I ordered it and I wasn't sure about it but I figured well we'll see I can always switch out the fabric because by that time I had discovered floss tube and I had learned about the fact that there are all kinds of fabric out there and all kinds of beautiful hand dyed flosses that you can use and you can switch out things in your pattern you don't actually have to Follow the pattern if you don't like it. Um, and most importantly, I learned about there's such a thing as a loop start and a loop start from the front, which was an incredible uh, discovery. <laughs> I'm really glad I learned that. I learned so much from Plus 2, but you don't know how much, and I really appreciate all the effort that every Plus 2 book puts into all those great uh, tutorials, but also just talking about how they stitch them. So yeah, I learned a lot from that. Um, so here's, um, I can show you a bit about what that print uh, looks like. You can see it's printed on the fabric, and as you can also see, this is actually the back 
of my work because I really wasn't sure I would like that because it looks quite busy. Actually, on the video, it, it does look um, much more muted than in real life. But I decided when I started this that I wouldn't use the printed side, I would just use the, the back side because then it got the print on it. And well, I finished this, um, I think, at the end of last year. Then I actually put it away. I didn't frame it, and there are several reasons for it. And uh, one of them is that um, this was actually the last ever piece that I used. As you can see, I used uh, painter's tape to stop my fabric from fraying. Now I sort of permanently have my mother's sewing machine on loan. So every fabric I have, I now search the edge with my, with my mother's sewing machine. Um, and this was the first even weave I ever put uh, the tape on, and as you can see, it doesn't come off. Which is such a pity. And I picked at this for several days, and I was just getting so fed up with it that I put it away. And another reason that I put it away for now is that um, now that it's done, I think it's very big. It's hard to find a good frame for it. And I'm not sure if I want such a big piece in my house. Um, actually, I've been lately thinking I might try and do this again. Um, on a different count of fabric and even maybe two over one because I do really like it. I, I really like the design, I like how it's turned out, I like the amount of detail that it has but I'm not sure if it's something I would eventually frame in this size. This is also the first time I actually left something out. As you can see the artist's signature is part of the pattern. It's actually something you're supposed to stitch. And I thought, well, I don't see a reason why I should. Well, there might be a reason to show that it's not my design, but I don't usually sign my pieces anyway, because mostly they are for my own use, so I know who stitched them. And I don't keep notes. I might have to start keeping notes because if I want to keep you up to date with my progress, I need to know which thing I started when. Um, so I didn't want to have the name of my line was there on this piece. Um, yeah, and that was that. And that was actually. For a while it was the last kit I ever did, um, but as I mentioned before, I have two nieces and one of them was getting to the age where um, the growth meter might be nice to have for her as well, and I thought, well, I'll make one for her, and I discussed it with my sister because I was thinking maybe I should just do the same one that I did for my older niece. And because they are two girls who tend to want the exact thing, same thing as the other one wants, like most little girls, I guess. Um, but my sister said, no, nah, I'd, I'd like it if it's a different pattern. And she actually made some suggestions. And we ended up picking another kit. And this is by, oh, surprise, surprise, by Fabaco. And this is again a growth meter um, by Vaco. Um, comes with an Ada fabric and the necessary flosses and a chart and a needle, I think. Yeah, I'm sure there's a needle in there. Um, and this is Maya, the bee. And her friend, Willie, as I learned. I used to watch Maya when I was little, so it kind of ages me probably, but who cares. Um, and I do like it. It was a lot of fun to stitch this one, even though it has a lot of yellow in it. 
I especially like the daffodils and the background here with the blue sky is actually half stitched. The only thing that was quite tedious about this is all these, these are actually millimeter marks and there are four different colors that repeat and if you have to do 60, 65 centimeters of that twice, that gets a bit tedious. But I do, I like the colors a lot and my niece was very happy with it. Oh, and there's also one thing I changed about this, is the name. I didn't really like the, um, the font, so I looked up my the other one, the other growth, the Dora one, the growth meter, and I do, did like that um, font. So yeah, I can put it out, so that this font. I did like that a lot, and it comes with the whole alphabet, so I just used that to stitch the name of my niece onto the Maya design. And by that time, I had been watching Tosloop a lot, and I had discovered that there were also things like 1, 2, 3 stitch, and so and so. And um, I stopped ordering kits basically and started. Um, working more with just patterns and choosing my own fabrics and my own glosses um, and it's not that I don't like kits that I that I don't do them as much anymore it's just that I do like the fact that uh, that there's more of a variety in designs and when you work with just patterns and um, a lot of them are more my style as I said before, I hope I had said it before, I'm not sure, that I do like to make things that actually have a certain place to go in my house. Um, and that kind of limits you in what you can stitch, because it has to suit your taste and your uh, interior. Um, but um, one of the final kits that I did uh, start, uh, well, I did start last year, but then I had all the framing issues, but deciding which frame I wanted and waiting for the frame to arrive. As you've seen in my previous one, it's the one um, by Vermeer, the lady with the pearl. That's actually one of the last kits I ever finished, which I finished in July, I think. And this also has a lot of floss left over, and this is all anchor thread. As you can see, um, the bottom three ones are all black, and I used up just under two of those, so I have a lot of anchor black left. And as I understand from some of the floss tube videos, um, apparently anchor black covers better than DMC, and I was thinking about that, and I have noticed when I, when I use anchor instead of DMC, or vice versa, that the anchor thread is a little bit thicker, and sometimes a little bit more fluffy, so I think that explains why the covers might be better for the black. They both are very nice to work with, by the way, and uh, I do like Anchor a lot, and DMC as well, but in the Netherlands, DMC is, is the thing that you can buy at local needle workshops more readily than the Anchor ones. I don't think, I have two, I found two in the end, two needle workshops in my area. Um, that I use mainly to get DMC floss and sometimes little things like an extra hoop or something. Um, the second one I discovered was actually um, the owner dies her own flosses. So the next thing I'm going to be kitting up, um, which I'll talk about in the future, is uh, I'm going to use some of her hand dyed floss for that. We'll talk about that when we come to it. So, um, as I was um, gathering up all my stuff uh, for past projects, I actually forgot that there's actually one kit that I worked on very recently. And if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you have seen the finished photograph of that. It's this uh, little kit by the Sweetheart Tree. Uh, today is a good day. It's tiny design. It, the finish size is only 4 by 7 centimeters. 
and I was contemplating about if I was going to show the finish but I guess since this is a cross stitch journey I might as well so I'll just grab it I finished this uh, as a box I bought these boxes uh, there's a set of three that fit into each other actually and this, this keeps my uh, beading stuff I actually bought them uh, last year thinking and uh, the back of the lid comes off and you can put a photograph or something in it to show up at the front but I thought it would be perfect for cross stitching stuff so that's actually um, what I bought them for only I didn't have any designs yet to put in them and when I saw this on a plus tube video by someone I forgot your name I'm sorry I thought oh gosh that is perfect I'd love to do that and um, I ordered the kit which is actually one of the most expensive kits I ever bought um, I guess it's because it has the charm in the beads uh, which might, might make it a bit expensive this was um, I called it on Instagram the red shoes of stitching it's I don't know if you know the children's story about the red shoes there's a girl and um, don't ask me the details of the story but she gets red dancing shoes and, and she can't take them off and she has to keep dancing these were my red shoes for stitching I couldn't stop this when I, I, I started this this week um, Tuesday or Wednesday I think and I finished this Thursday or Friday so I just couldn't stop it put it up close. What I did do is because I wanted to fit it in this box and and I added these rows of uh, rose hearts because without them it just looked kind of lost in the in the frame and it was the perfect size to add two extra rows of hearts to it. And I really like doing these rose hearts by the way. It was my first time doing these kinds of stitches. Um, yeah, once you've done one or two, you know, you kind of figured out what how the pattern goes and it stitches up really fast. And this this came with three color of beads. I'm trying to see if you can pick them out. There's white ones and there's kind of pale green ones and there's uh, black ones with kind of rainbow effect on them, so they look purpley, bluey, yellowy, depending on how you look at them. And they came with these. Whoop. Oh yes, I don't, I'm not sure what, how to call them in English. And the little heart and charm. Oh, I'm, so, I'm still in love with this. And I really like that I could put it in this box. And since it has uh, beads on it, and this is my bead box, I thought it was the perfect place to put it. But that's actually the last kit I finished. And I'm currently, well, I still have one kit in pro, pro, process, work in process, progress, um, which I'll have to walk away from afar to get it. And that was my only girl thing, I think I've already mentioned it. But that's the last kit I currently have in my rotation. Um, that's about it. It's already 30, 40 minutes of video I think uh, that's about enough especially if I'm going to add all those pictures in um, I'll do uh, an update on where I'm at but in, in the next video um, might make a separate video uh, of the uh, Rico design booklets that I have not sure we'll see for now that's it for me uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much for watching and also thank you for adding likes and comments to my video and previous videos and uh, see you next time. Bye!